Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today in this video, our group will be explaining about the famous physicist Henry Cavendish Our group is from class 3K7 and consists of Danish, Alif and Afik First, let's start with the overview of Henry Cavendish Henry Cavendish was born on 10th October 1731 in Nice, France. At the age of 11, Henry attended Newcombe School, a private school near London. At the age of 18, he entered the University of Cambridge in St. Peter's College. He then lived with his father in London where he soon had his own laboratory. In 1760, Henry Cavendish was elected in the Council of Royal Society of London. In 1766, Cavendish found that a definite, peculiar and highly inflammable gas which is hydrogen. In 1777, Cavendish discovered fixed air which referred to carbon dioxide. In 1798, he determined the density of the earth and the experiment became known as Cavendish experiment. He then died at Clapham, London in 1810 and was buried with many of his ancestors. The road he used to live on has been named after him. The Cavendish Laboratory was endowed by William Cavendish. Gravity is undeniable. In the 1600s, Isaac Newton proposed an equation for measuring the gravitational pull between two objects. Force gravitational pull equal is equivalent to G gravitational constant mass object 1 mass object 2 over R squared. Now the problem here is what is G? Looking at the textbooks, G is equivalent to 6.674 times 10 to the power of negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. However, what does this number mean? And why is it this specific number? So, that's when we turn to another bright mind, Henry Cavendish. This guy is big brain and came around 100 years after Sir Isaac Newton. To help us find G, Cavendish proposed the Cavendish experiment, which is based on another scientific experiment, where we have two masses, small mass M2, big mass M1, and we are measuring the gravitational pull between the two. It is within a big box to stop air currents from disturbing the experiment. Basically, by measuring the amount of pull between small m and big m, as well as minusing the torque for the twistiness of the string, we can roughly measure G. Here are Henry Cavendish's units. A quick note. And that is, gravity is indeed real. You uh, exert a gravitational pull to everything in the universe, and same goes everything in the universe towards you. The only thing that's stopping you from sticking to the wall, for instance, is friction. Friction between the floor, between air, as well as gravitational pull on you towards the earth. There's also another thing to note that Henry Cavendish did not actually find G. Instead, he used the experiment to calculate the density and the mass of the Earth, hence why he was called the person who made the Earth. G was later found in 1874 using Henry Cavendish's calculations. So we can safely credit Henry Cavendish for finding G. Anyhow, here is our experiment. We use two bricks and two ping pong balls. This is a long rod tied to a string. Here is our protractor where we can measure radians. By using the same principle, the force of gravity between M1 and the top force of the string will keep this thing swaying in equilibrium and we can measure that in radians and input it into the equation. So, I for some math. The force of gravity is due to G minus 1 minus 2 over R squared. G can be expressed as 2 pi squared L theta R squared over T squared M. F can be expanded into F is equivalent to K theta over L. L is the length of the rod in meters. K is the torsion coefficient or the twistiness of the spring. 
and theta is the degree of oscillation in radians. Next, g 2 pi squared l theta r squared over t squared m can be messed around with and we can yield 2 pi squared m l squared theta over t squared is equivalent to g m1 m2 over r squared. By using algebra, we can get g equals 2 pi squared l theta r squared over t squared m, which g is measured in newton meter squared over kilogram squared, l is the length of the rod in meters, theta is degree of oscillation in radians, t is the time taken for the oscillation in seconds, m is measured in kilograms, and r is the distance between big mass and small mass in meters. Using the experiment that we had done before, we plug our values g equals 2 pi squared 0 0.624078 0 0.0523539 0 0.17526 squared 1860 squared 6.350029 And we yield the grand total of g equals 9.018 times 10 to the power of negative 10 newton meter squared over kilogram squared Victory. However, why are we celebrating when the value is pretty off? Or is it? To think of it, the difference is pretty small and negligible. We got the value close by one decimal point. Well, in reality, this is the problem with science on a budget. Cavendish was funded by the University of Cambridge so he can do his experiments as large scale as possible whereas us, well, college students, we had to work with what we had at the time. So our experiments may or may not be as accurate as how Cavendish could have done. But still, to think of how Cavendish managed to get such an accurate value a back in 1700s is quite wild. Here's another quick note on how Cavendish was able to be credited for G. So, usually in physics, the force of gravity is just m times 9.8. Now, how do we get this constant? 9.8 is the mass of the Earth times G over the radius of the Earth. Okay? Now, since Cavendish managed to find the mass of the Earth, that is 5.972 times 10 to the power of 24, we can finally use this equation to calculate G, which is 6.674 times 10 to the power of negative 11. The radius of the Earth was not found by Henry Cavendish. Instead, it was found by a physicist long years before, around 1000 to 2000 BC. So, thank you, Henry Cavendish. And thank you for watching this video.